All right, and we're recording. So welcome to class 11. And um, we, today we are be going to cover for loops. Um, this class will be easy for me and very hard for you because I... <laughs> When you're programming MUMS, you you the the thing one of the things that you write most in MUMS code is for loops and endless amount of them. It's just like you everything is a for loop because you're usually looping through data and so you have to do something with the data. So um I plan to cover for loops over two classes, so we're gonna cover it this class. I'm gonna for your homework assignment, you're going to expand the pumpkin weighing homework. And then um, oh, the, next, the next class after that, we're going to cover more for loops. And then I'll ask you to do a for loop on data on Vista. And you, you're going to have to get very proficient at for loops because essentially, if you don't master for loops, it's uh, the rest of my... You're not gonna make it in the mumps world. You have to master for loops. It's it's really essential in programming mumps. Oh, it all depends on what machine I'm on. Oh, I see. Zignes just joined us. Let's see if we could add him to the to the conference call. Well, he's not, he's not on Skype, okay. Okay, so for loops are, um, let's start off with their simplest form. So the, the way for loops uh, usually work is as follows. So you type a four, let me do it in a comment first. For and then a variable, then variable equals start colon increment colon um, and then here action and and after the action. Uh, let me put this. Now I'm putting quit in in the optional brackets. This is sort of a this is sort of a computer science convention to say it's optional. And then you know, all right. Zignesh, has he joined us? Hi, Sam. Hi. Hi. Can you mute, please? All right. Fantastic. Thank you, Zignesh. All right. Very good. So, Zignesh, we're covering the for loops, and we're going to start with the very simplest, uh, the very simplest for loops. So, so this is. So let's let me give you an example. So, oh, before I say anything. Four is abbreviated as F. So let's start with an example. So four X equal one colon one colon ten. So write X comma exclamation mark. Okay. Is this example understandable? This is this is the very simplest for loop that should be pretty easy to understand. Okay, fantastic. So this is the easiest example to understand the for loop. Uh, unfortunately, most of the for loops in, in Vista don't follow this pattern because we're usually we usually don't know in Vista how many things are we counting. But um this is this is good. So we're gonna start with the simplest thing, and remember, we're spending two classes on for loops to make sure that it's hammered in. So, okay. So I'm gonna put a quit, and we usually write it like this: 
because we cannot use an if statement inside a, a for because uh, actually let me let me make a little a little segue on a f on a few on an item here that we we talked about briefly before but let's cover it again if if else for statements all have line scope this is really important that means that you know at for so anything that follows if else or for may get executed so um this is this is important because you know uh they are sort of gatekeepers so okay so um that's one thing i wanted to mention so let me let's go back to the thing i wanted to show you so because Because if has uh, affects the rest the rest of the line, we actually don't use if. So I actually want to quit if x is equal to five. So if x equals to five, quit, and then write x. Is is there a way to actually make this? This is legal mumps code, but where will it actually work? Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Here we are. Um, quit takes an argument. So if I'm not supplying it with an argument, I have to put two spaces. Another confusing thing, just like the else command. But we're going to get back to that in a moment. Okay. Who wants to tell me what happened? All right, Alice is typing. That's correct. Actually, that's correct, Alice. It ran until five, and then it quit. But how come? How come write x never 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 wrote x? Yeah, that's exactly. That's a great question. Why is it? Why didn't it print? Good question. Line scope. Thank you. That's exactly that's exactly right, Rob. This is exactly what I what I uh, what I uh, mentioned. So when when you when it says if x equal five, then everything after the if is gatekeep is gate is gate kept by the if. So. The only the only time where we potentially could get to the right is actually when we when we actually reach when we when x equals five, but we hit the quit before we get to the right, and therefore it never happens. Does that make sense, Alice? Okay, I will. All right, so. Um, if, else, and for all of these, all of these, com all three, all of these three commands actually have line scope. That means that um, it, they act as a gatekeeper, and therefore the rest of the line will not execute unless you, unless you actually, uh, unless the condition is true. And so the uh, the condition is true only when when I when x equals five, as you said, but what when x equals five, it's gonna hit the quit first, and it quits out of the for loop, and we're done. And so we never get to do the right at all. So 
in general, unless you know what you're doing, it's a bad practice to combine for if... Yes, that's correct, Jignes. That's correct. So, in general, uh, it's not a good idea to combine for, if, and else on a single line. So let me write this down. So what do, so what do we do to quit in the middle of a for loop? So we, we do this. We do this instead. So we, we use post conditional. So we say quit if x equal 5. And let's just make it user f programmer friendly, not user friendly. And uh, again, remember, if I don't put two spaces, you're going to see what's going to happen. Okay, same problem. Now, we've not, we've not talked about why quit takes an argument. So for now, you're just going to have to take it from me as a, as, a, as a word of God that you have to put two spaces after the quit. You will know we'll know why in future classes, but not today. Okay. So looking at the, looking at this code, does anybody have any questions on what happened? You could see that Essentially, it keeps repeating. It keeps repeating doing the action every single time until it hits the quit condition. And quit is, it says quit when x equals five, and then it stops. And therefore, when x equals five, does it get to write x? Yes or no? Exactly. So it never gets to actually write x when x is equal to 5 because it hits the quit statement first. So anybody has any idea how do we get it to quit when x is equal 5 but also to print to print uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? It's actually pretty simple. Take a guess, guys. And gals, excuse me, sorry. Oh, we could do that. We could do that. That's also a good. That's a good idea. So, switch them. I think Tony. Tony understood. Tony. Tony actually has the right answer, but he did describe it in detail. What we would do is instead of putting the quit uh, if x equal five at the uh, be before right x, we're going to put it after the right x. And here you are. So, does that make sense? Okay, good, good. All right. So, um, You know that we could actually put quits before and after the main statements, but we're not going to do that because usually mo just very crazy loops actually have that condition. So um, now I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what what else I could show you. Oh, I have an idea. So I am I am not I'm not going to sh show you this in all its glory, but you can do a uh, you can do different you can do different combinations of the one step one to ten. So what if I do one step two to ten? 
look what happens. Interesting. But one step three. There you are. So, but what, notice there's something happened interesting with the one step three that did not happen with the one step one or the one step two. We never hit the number five. Here you go, Alice was just asking, why did it stop at five? That's exactly the point. X never equaled five, ever. When you add one, when you add three to one, what's the next number? It's four. When you add three to four, what happens? It's seven. Will X ever equal to five? All right, exactly. So it will never stop at five. So let's, uh, let's do another twist. If we make this minus 10, who wants to tell me what's going to happen? Well, let's see. Actually, to be honest, Alice, I did not know, know I did not even know myself what's going to happen here. <laughs> I've never tried this. <laughs> but uh, what happened is a bit logical is that basically it said, I'll never get to minus 10. The loop is in the wrong direction. But we could do the following. We could do one step minus three to minus 10. And here you are. Any questions so far? Okay. So, so you've seen the various way we could actually manip manipulate manipulate this. Now here's another here's another way, and this way is a bit is the one. This is um, all of these ways that I showed you above give you finite loops, which means that they actually have an endpoint. Now there are ways to make infinite loops using four. So let's try let's try some of those infinite loops. Let's quit, let's quit when x equals 15. So, I want you to see how this works. So you have one step one. Let me just put it as a comment and just say infinite loop. So, this is one x1 step one with no end point this is important so the you you'll see this a lot in vista and basically you don't have an end point to your for loop it just keeps go writing x x until it quits now if i don't put a quit here um basically our terminal we're just gonna keep printing numbers going up and up and up and up and up which you are free to try uh at your own leisure but I'll show you what happens here. So it prints one step one and it's it goes one two until it reaches sixteen. Fifteen, excuse me. And if I do one step two, this would be pretty logical. It will be one, three, five, and so forth. Here you go. Now I have to be careful if I say uh, if it doesn't hit the hit the quit condition, it's gonna go on forever. All right. 
Um, so the next the next item that I'm gonna show you is you sometimes see this in Vista code zero colon zero. And I don't I personally don't want to execute it because I don't know how I'm gonna get out of it. <laughs> it's gonna loop on forever. So this this tells X to start with zero and continue and get incremented by zero every time. Now you would you would ask who in their right mind would actually write this? Um, so this means, let me write it down. Start with zero and add zero at, at each loop. Oh yes, you, uh, you can get out with a control C, but remember, uh, the, your, your regular users, the people using Vista, don't have control C available to them, so you, they would be trapped in an infinite loop. So, uh, the big question is, why would anybody write x equals 0, colon 0? Well, um, there's actually a reason for it. And the reason is, uh, reason is actually somewhat, uh, somewhat difficult. It's somewhat convoluted because 4 has another form which, which loops endlessly, but it does not have a looper variable, which is 4 with two spaces. We're going to cover it next. So, but that was in, introduced in the 19, MUMPS 1990 standard. And therefore, uh, before the 1990 standard, in order to accomplish the same effect, programmers used to write for x equals 0, colon 0, and then continue and uh, to have it loop endlessly and not change the loop variable when they, uh, when they uh, continue, when they keep moving. So, okay. Actually, we're going to cover this some more, so don't worry about it if you don't understand it right now. We're going to cover it some more. So, um, so far, besides the x equals 0, colon 0, do you guys have any questions? Okay, good. Okay, so um, let me let me give you an example of a an example of a program of how to do a menu system without having to do a, without have, having to use go tos because that's a common problem and this is illustrates the one of the big uses of the for loop. Actually, I, I have to define a variable that will get me out of the for loop. So here you go. So okay. So I'm I'm combining the do command which we learned about two classes ago. With uh, so I'm, and I'll show you how that works. It's gonna create a new block for us. It's gonna do quit of dollar and quit if done equals one 
And again, I probably want to put it in parentheses so it's readable for programmers. Set done equals zero. So now, since I have a do, I'm going to put a dot levels after the do. And I'm going to say, right, choose one of the following menu options, two new lines. Uh, no end quote, here we go. Two new lines, and then I'm gonna write, and I'm gonna move over five spaces, and I'm gonna say, say hello. Oh, you probably wanna put one next to it. One, say hello, and, and then we're gonna write five spaces over, to say goodbye. And let's write a new line here and say write to quit type Q. We have to put it into two quotes. Actually, let's just type put it in a single quote, that would be fine. Type Q or type up carrot. Then we're gonna write Actually, we're not going to write anymore. We're going to read type 1 or 2. Now, then enter. And let's read into the variable x. And this means that I should kill x before we start. So I don't leave it over. Here we go. Let's put a comment here and then say if if x equals one, right? Actually, let's must just make a do hello. If x equal to do by. Oh, we said it's goodbye. Never mind. Goodbye. And then if x equals q or x equals up caret set done equal one and quit. So if and quit, let's put quits after this. Invalid choice. Choose one or two. So th this this last statement will only be hit if we never, if none of the other ones actually get, if none of the, if then neither one of the three if statements get chosen above, this last one will get executed. All right, and inside this routine, we're gonna make a two entry points, one called, let's just put a comment here, one called hello, 
we're going to say right hello. Quit. Goodbye. Right, goodbye. All right, now I think I finished my routine. Actually, before we, before I save it, I still have one more statement. All right. Right Z trap, uh, right Z break. Okay, Z trap is at break, so that's good. All right, so let's run this. Initially, here you go. Let's. I'll type three. It's gonna tell you. It's. Oh, well, it said invalid choice, but I have to actually put. Uh, I have to put a new line before it. So let's see if I say hello. Uh, I think I really need a new line after that read command, so we're going to add that. And let's just say... Right, new line. Okay. All right, let's see now if we could do it. If we type up carrot, here we go. It says, thank you for using the program. We type Q, thank you for using the program. If I type little Q, it doesn't work because I never tested for little Q. But now it gives us all everything correctly and we, now we have a real menu system. And I could say, Goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello, 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 goodbye. Three doesn't work. And now I'll press up carrot and it works. So, fantastic so far. Now, I, we need to dissect this program. It, we need to dissect it when it's running line by line by line by line. This is very important. So, so... If you remember from last class, we're going to put a, a Z break on the program from the top. So it's KBAN menu. And then we're going to, I'm going to use the thing I have in my copy and paste buffer, which is this. Okay line by line and we're going to explore it line by line all right so i'm going to move my cursor so you could guys could follow me so here you go um here is the four and what i if you remember from the code I've not used I for any purpose whatsoever. So when it says I equals zero colon zero, it essentially means that loop infinitely. We don't want we don't want you to ever stop unless unless you hit this quit. And it's gonna quit when done is equal to one. So we're going to continue. Now, we're just hitting a do with two spaces. And from two classes ago, a do with two spaces will make you enter a block. 
And so we expect the next line to have a dot next to it. Yes, it does. So here you go. This is the first thing. So we're going to start with right, choose one of the following menu options. This is pretty straightforward. So this time I'm going to hit 1. Okay. So this this is one okay, so we're actually um GTM does not step like cache. Cache will show you every command as it's executed, but here here we're only we're going to execute the whole line at once. So I just want to tell you what's going to happen because we're going to see it happen and we will be and when we just when we come back from the hello, we're going to say where where the hell did we go? So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to say if x equal 1 and you know that I entered 1, so this is going to run. It's going to do hello. So so now we know that the transfer of control, our breadcrumb trail, it's gonna go, it's gonna take us down into a new stack level called hello, and we're gonna run that part of the program. But, here's the important part. You see there's a quit after, uh, after it? This quit gets us to quit from the do block we are currently running. It's the same as any other quit, actually, because quit always gets you. Quit always takes you out of the level of the stack that you were in, with one exception, which I'm going to tell you about in a moment. So, when I press Z step into, I'm supposed to start executing hello. Here you go. So, I'm executing hello plus one. Just want to point this out to you. and then we're gonna quit. Now, this is the hard part. Which, which one, is, which line is going to be our next line? So, I'm gonna print the program so that we know where we are. So, let's... So, I'm gonna move my cursor. I hope you guys could follow me. We just we just ran do hello, so I'm going to do hello, oops, hello, I'm going to move my cursor, moving, 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 oh, I'm at hello. Now I go down and I say write hello there, and I quit. What does a quit do? It returns me back from the where, point where I started, so it takes me back to just after the do hello. What's the next command? It's another quit, but okay, so how does this quit, this one over here, differ from this quit? Well, I'm going to surprise you. They are not different. They both do the same function. They say I'm at a level of a stack invoked by a do command. Therefore, I'm going to unwind that level and go back to where that do command started. And so, what this will do when I hit this quit over here is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go back to the do command that invoked me. Let me look for it. Let me look for it. Let me look for it. Oh, oh, oh. Here it is. Do. So I'm going to just put my cursor right here and continue execution. And my continued execution is going to check the variable quit if done equals one. And then question is, am I going to quit now? answer is the answer is no because done isn't one now incidentally and here's that here's that little confusing part about the quit command here a quit command on a for loop does not quit your do invocation or routine invocation unlike the all the other quits that you see in this routine so 
this is an important lesson, which is a quit command on a for loop quits the for loop. It does not quit the routine. This is a big exception on how quit works. And it's confusing as hell, especially when you have a very complex routine that ha has tons of quits everywhere and you're, you're expecting that this is going to return you back from where you started. It does not. This quit is special. This one is special. So, this does not happen. So, what's it going to do? It's going to go up here again. It's going to increment i by 0. But i is already 0. So, what's 0 plus 0? It's 0. So, i stays 0. And then it's going to hit this do again. It's gonna, then it's going to hit it down and it's going to go down here and it's going to run this all over again. So let's actually see this in action. Remember we left off at the end of, hello, at the, end of uh, do the, hello, the right hello. So we're going to see where we're going to hit go next. So we went back to KBAN menu plus 5, which is... the line immediately that follows the for loop. Now this is something that's actually not good about GTM and Cache does this better. In Cache, you could actually trace through the execution of the quit command on the for loop. But in GTM, you pretty much don't see it because it's a, that's a line that's already loaded. It's going to execute it in memory before and then uh, so basically GTM executes this line and then executes the next line after that. So that is actually a tiny problem with GTM that I would certainly love for GTM if GTM is improved. But on cache, you, when you do debugging, it's going to take you saying, oh yeah, yeah, I'm back here and I'm going to run this part of the routine now. All right, so back into... into the routine and this this time I'm gonna put an up carrot and we're gonna see what happens okay this is not gonna run because X is not one this is not gonna run because X is not two now if X equals Q so this one is actually run or X equal up carrot so it's gonna set equal done equal to one and then it's gonna quit so we're going to put Z step into. Now remember the quit inside the for loop, it will quit back to the top. And so we need to go back to the routine, take a look at it, and see where it's going to quit. All right. Remember we're currently on this line. So it sets done equal to 1, and then it quits. So, what's it going to do next is it's going to go back to the for loop and it's going to hit the quit if done is equal to 1. Now, done equal to 1 is actually true now. Therefore, it's actually going to quit, but only quit the for loop. Okay, it actually quit the for loop in a hurry, the way GTM usually does. But now what happened after that? Well, let's go back to our program. So what we just did here is we, this, when we hit the quit, it means we quit the for loop and it's not going to run. The for loop is not going to run anymore. So what's the next line after the for loop? Well, we're going to have to skip everything that's a continuation of the for loop under the do and go down here. So the next line is right. Thank you for using the program. And that's indeed where we are right now. Oh. 
So here it is, right? Thank you for using the program. And we z step into it, writes it, and the next command is a quit. And we're done. Okay, let me open the editor. And I'm going to open this for questions. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's continuing. All right. Does anybody have any questions about the routine flow that we discussed this far, so far? Um, yes, I will keep I will keep this routine in V forum so you could review it later. I'm gonna I'm gonna print it's it's also in the printout and I'm hopefully 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 we're gonna be able to email you the printout so I won't lose it again. So so oops what what happened did did somebody sign out or something? I said I have a here here saying conference call duration. Oh, I'm not sure what happened. Okay, never mind. You guys still hear me? Okay, good. Okay, never mind. I don't know what happened. So all right, fantastic. So now I'm going to show you a new feature of the for loop of the for loop that we haven't discussed before. So ready guys? So remember I told you that I told you that this means do it infinitely zero step zero and that was the only way you could write an infinite loop uh, before the mumps 1990 standard. Uh, after the 1990 standard a new format was introduced which is four with two spaces. Four with two spaces will do the same thing as incrementing by zero. So here we go. We do this again. Let me print it out. And let's just verify that in the printout we actually get the four with two spaces. So here's four with two spaces. And we actually go ahead and run it. Somebody's not on mute. Can you make sure you guys mute? Here we go. And so when we run this again, we get to say hello or say goodbye. So the routine did not change at all. It's the same thing. So you get to say hello there and say goodbye. So pretty much nothing changed. So uh, let me put it in as a comment. So for for i equals zero colon zero or four with two spaces after it gives you infinite loops. All right. Now I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what else did I want to cover today. I covered the basics of the for loop, and let me see if there's anything else that I need to cover. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think because I I want us I want to I want us to work on the next part of for loops only when we're ready only when we've practiced a little bit with this already. So, um, so I think I'm going to end the class early today then. 
and we are going to cover the next part of the for loops next class where where we're gonna use for loops to order through globals and uh, calculate data that way so uh, what I'm what what I want you to do in the meantime is the following I want you to do to I want you to actually do a couple uh, you, I want you to go back to your pumpkin homework and make sure you have the following features. So, here's your homework. You're gonna still do the pumpkin. Pump. I don't know how to spell. Oh, there's a little p. Pumpkin. So you're gonna have to add the following features. So one, you have to have a menu system. And I just showed you right now how to make a menu system. So you're gonna, uh, you're gonna, have, to, you're gonna have to figure out what that menu is going to be. It's, it's up to you what you want to tell the user. Maybe, maybe the menu is uh, one, enter, enter pumpkin weights, or two, and two, print pumpkin weights, and three, quit, something like that. But you have to have at least any menu system. And two is you must have an unlimited number of pumpkins. Uh, you must allow us to weigh an unlimited amount of pumpkins then print the highest three saying which pumpkin Okay, so actually, before I end, I just remember, I just gave you a homework which you can't do, so I have to tell you how to do it. There's one, one thing that's missing in the for loop that we did not cover, but I have to cover it in order for you to be able to do the homework. So, um, you're going to have to read the pumpkin weights into an array. So, So you're gonna you're gonna have the pumpkin weights like the the like the following. So uh, you're gonna set x of pumpkin three. Uh, actually, you're gonna set uh, you're gonna set the weight. I'm trying to say you know, we need to sort it. So you're gonna set the weight of the pumpkin. So let's say pumpkin. Pumpkin one weighs this much. Pumpkin two weighs this much. Uh, Eleven. Pumpkin three weighs this much. And pumpkin four weighs this much. So, in order for you to be able to print this array out to the user, what you have to do is the following. You're going to have to combine dollar order with the for loop. And I was hoping to postpone this until next class, but you know, here you get you get to have a taste taste for it. So. So, uh, 
You know, guys, I'm almost changing my mind. How about the following? I still want to save this to next class because this is this is a bit hard and I don't think I want to dump this on you dump this on you this class. It's not a good idea. I still have I need to explain this this is one of the hardest things in Vista and I need to explain it to you pretty well. So I'm gonna tell you never mind just do the menu system for your pumpkins. That's it. So just do number one. And next week, after we co after we cover the four loop uh, the four loops again, um, I would like you to uh, and we ex discuss four loops with dollar order. I'm gonna assign you number two, which is a uh, basically weigh an unlimited amount a uh, number of pumpkins, not amount. Wrong English here. <laughs> then print the highest three. All right. I guess that should be it for today's class then. Any questions? All righty. So that's it then, guys.